Hello and welcome to this week's Friday Freebie Quiz. Uh, before I hand over to the lovely Sean Williamson, I just have a couple of messages for you. One is please don't cheat. Please, please, please don't cheat. It's really annoying for everybody if you do. And if you really must cheat, just don't put your scores in. Thank you very much. Um, and secondly, um, lots of people play this quiz after the day that it's launched. Um, and so please don't write the answers anywhere uh, because that upsets people and we get emails and things. Please don't do that. Thank you. Um, and I will be available um, on Facebook after the quiz. Please come and find me. I'd love to chat to you, find out how you found the quiz, how you got on. Um, our Facebook page, if you go onto Facebook and you just type quizzing TV, all is one word, you will find us. Okie dokie, I'm now going to hand you over to the wonderful Mr. Sean Williamson. Thank you, Jane. Yes, hello, welcome. It's Friday night, it's eight o'clock, and I'm Sean Williamson, and this is our big international internet quiz. So welcome from Baltimore to Belfast, Inverness to Innsbruck, and Mombasa to Melbourne. You are very welcome, particularly if you are new. If this is your first uh, week doing the quiz, hello, welcome. Uh, I'll just uh, explain uh, how it all works. There's four rounds. Rounds one, two, and four are general knowledge rounds of 10 questions each round. And round three is always a picture round. Uh, after round one, we do a few shout outs. Uh, so if you'd like to be included next week, uh, contact us uh, at hello at quizzing.tv. That's the easiest way to get in touch with us. Uh, and yeah, uh, and at the end, you can put your scores into the uh, our leaderboard. Jane Allen will explain at the end how you do that, because we'd like to know how you got on and what your name is, basically. So, yeah, uh, it's here we go again. How many weeks is this now? Totally lost touch now. Getting crazy, isn't it? It's week, week 11, week 12. I, I, don't, I generally don't know. How was your week? I know the shops open uh, in England on Monday, so the high streets will gradually uh, come back to life. I'm missing the old live music, though, are you? We've got any live music fans out there? Because I was supposed to do uh, quite a few festivals this summer. Singing karaoke. That's what I do at festivals. And uh, I'm missing that. I was supposed to do Glastonbury, and that's been cancelled. Terrible. The last time I was at Glastonbury, I saw Dolly Parton on the Legends stage. She sang nine to five. I mean, I like her, but eight hours. You know what I mean? Cool, that was a that was a big gig. Because I'm trying to organise my own concert uh, to raise funds uh, for charity uh, when, when all this uh, lockdown is over. So I put out an advert uh, for any tribute acts to get in touch with me. But last night I was woken up at midnight by a guy just singing down the line, stand and deliver. I said, please, mate, just go away. It's late. One o'clock in the morning, he phoned up singing Prince Charming. I said, please stop. But he was adamant. Adamant, he was. I've just been doing the old adamant diet. I've lost a stone. Yeah, you don't chew ever. Don't chew ever. Don't you ever. Uh, and also this week, there was a lovely interview with um, Wayne and Colleen Rooney. Uh, they were talking about their, their lovely children and particularly seven-year-old Clay. They're hoping one day he's going to become a model. Shall we make a start? Here's round one. OK, first of all, we're going to look at the leaderboard from last week. So uh, we're going to so you can see uh, how you got on. Uh, it was a good uh, a good week. Not too many people got top marks. Uh, well, let's start with third place, the joint third place, shall we? We've got some great names up there. We have on there, we've got the Watsits, the Wild Swans, all of these scored 38. Let me put my glasses on. Les Splatproot from France, Grant Stanley from England, Luke Charmason and PCIT, the Damn Squids from the Netherlands, Kelvin and Yolandi from New Zealand, uh, the Purple Sioux from England, Slope Artists from Austria, Michael Law from Scotland, Vivian Jones from England, and Elise Hay from England. Well done. All on 38 points. How many got 39? Not many. Just four of you. We've got Sean Cairns from Scotland, the Pharaohs from England, Ugly Caddyshack Resurrected uh, from Scotland. They will score 39. And Raj Dualia, Raj Dualia, sorry, Raj, Raj Dualia. Raj Dualia, ladies and gentlemen, is the unofficial world quizzing champion because we had the world championships on saturday morning it was called not the world championships because they were postponed because of uh, covid19 and they're going to be held in december but raj put on a brilliant performance and came first on saturday morning so well done raj but who scored 40 last week let's have a look shall we three teams pat gibson 
the icon, the man himself, uh, and the only solo player last week to score 40. Well done, Pat. We've got the Sheppy Superstars. Well done, Sheppy Superstars. Really strong team. And live from Norwich, uh, from England. So well done <clears throat> to all of those teams and individuals. And good luck for this week. So now let's start round number one. Here's your first question. What title is shared by a 2015 song by Adele and a 1983 song by Lionel Richie? What title is shared by a 2015 song by Adele and a 1983 song by Lionel Richie? Certainly you'll know that if you're, if you're my vintage. 21. Question number one. Title shared by Adele and Lionel Richie. Question number two. The name of which month of the year appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet? The name of which month of the year appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet? If you don't know, you've got a choice of 12. I bought a wine box last week, but I'm taking it back. I'm not having it. It said on it said on the label once it once opened it lasts six weeks. Only lasted two days. Nightmare. Which month of the year appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Question number three. Bit of geography for you. If you were paddling in the sea in Cancun or Acapulco, which country would you be? If you were paddling in the sea in Cancun or Acapulco, in which country would you be? That looks nice, doesn't it? You won't be going there for a while. Never mind. We've got a Bournemouth, Margate, Morecambe. Other seaside resorts are available, by the way. Just uh, not, I'm not getting a bung from the from those cities. Paddling in the sea in Cancun or Acapulco, in which country would you be in? That was question number three. Question number four. Which country gave the Statue of Liberty to the USA? Which country gave the Statue of Liberty to the USA? By the way, if you ever go to New York, you don't have to pay to go up it, really. Well, you do, but... You could also always get the Staten Island Ferry for nothing, and you can take a picture of it. You're about a, a, a thousand yards away, but you can still get a picture of it. That's if you're tight like me. Just a little tip there. Question four, which country gave the Statue of Liberty to the USA? Question number five, for all you foodies, how is the alligator pear more commonly known? How is the alligator pear more commonly known. I've got an idea for a new TV show. It's called The Pottery Apprentice. The winner gets fired. Good, that, isn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe you don't think it is. Whatever. Let's not come up with. How is the alligator pair more commonly known? Question five. Question number six. If a cockney said you have a lot of bread and honey, you'd have a lot of what? If a cockney said you've got a lot of bread, let's say bread and honey, bread and honey, you'd have a lot of what? And there they are, the old pearly kings and queens. They still dress like that. Traditionally, they're costermongers or fruit and veg salespeople. Traditionally. If a cockney said you've got a lot of bread and honey, what have you got a lot of? That's round one, question six. Question seven. Designed by Vincent Conair and released in 1994 by the Microsoft Corporation, which font is this question written in? Designed by Vincent Conair and released in 1994 by the Microsoft Corporation, which font is this question written in? Not easy. Got some good news, though. I passed my uh, my cheerleader exam first time. Good, that, isn't it? 
I just went in the room and went, give me an A. And they did. Isn't that fantastic? Or not? Vincent Conair, released in 1994. Which font? And the question is written in that font. Question eight. Bead, ribbon, forked, sheet and ball are all types of what weather phenomenon? Bead, ribbon, forked, sheet and ball are all types of what weather phenomenon? One for the science boffins there. Question number nine. Best known for westerns, which actor's birth name was Marion Morrison? Best known for westerns, which actor's birth name was Marion Morrison? I will be honest, during lockdown, I've developed a nasty habit of drinking brake fluid. Although I'm confident I can stop any time I like. So that's good. Best known for Westerns, which actor's birth name was Marion Morrison? And question number 10, the final uh, question of round one. Which word can go before decision, personality, and second? Which word can go before decision, personality, and second? Okay, we're gonna have a, we'll have a recap now. Give you a bit more time. So, number one, what title is shared by a 2015 song by Adele and a 1983 song by Lionel Richie? Number two, the name of which month appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Number three, if you are paddling in the sea in Cancun or Acapulco, which country would you be in? Number four, which country gave the Statue of Liberty to the USA? Number five, how is the alligator pear more commonly known? Number six, if a cockney said you've got a lot of bread and honey, you'd have a lot of what? Number seven, designed by Vincent Conair and released in 1994 by the Microsoft Corporation, which font is this question written in? Number eight, bead, ribbon, fork, sheet and ball are types of what weather phenomenon? Number nine, best known for Westerns, which actor's birth name was Marion Morrison. Number 10, which word can go before decision, personality, and second? We'll give you a few more seconds there. Don't leave a gap. That's the only rule. Don't leave a gap. Just have a guess if you're not sure. You never know. I think that's a reasonably gentle first round, by the way. It does get trickier. Okay. Good luck. Here are the answers to round one. Answer to uh, question number one, the title shared by Dad and Lionel Richie was. Hello. See what we did there. It's not just thrown together, mate. This quiz. A lot of thought goes into this. The answer to number two. Which month appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet is November. Answer number three. If you were paddling in the sea in Cancun or Acapulco, you'd be in Mexico. Number four, which country gave the Statue of Liberty the USA? France. Number five, how is the alligator pear more commonly known? Is the avocado. Answer number six. The Cockney said you've got a lot of bread and honey. You've got a lot of money, innit? I mean, I'm sorry for tuning in from the Philippines. It's money. Number seven. The answer to uh, design by Vincent Conair. Oh, yeah. What's the name of this font? Comic Sans. Comic is the word we're after. Well done if you got that. I wouldn't have had a clue, to be honest with you. The answer to number eight, which was bead, ribbon, fork, sheet and ball. They're all types of lightning. Number nine, best known for Westerns, which actor's birth name was Marion Morrison. You wouldn't have teased him about that name because it was Big John Wayne, ladies and gentlemen. And I think the anniversary of his death was yesterday, 1979. And nearly 250 films, many of them at the start of his career as a, an extra walk-on. And number 10. 
the answer to, which can go before decision, personality in second, split. So how did you do? How did you do? Uh, I thought it was reasonably gentle. I thought number seven was very tough. Very tough. Hopefully you've got seven or eight or more. Let us know at the end. Okay, that's round one out of the way. We're going to do a few shout-outs now. Here we go. We've got Gary, Gwen and Kerry. Emily and Nick in MK. I assume that's Milton Keynes. Uh, Helen Yu. Corin and James in Buckinghamshire. We've got the Watkins mob. Hello, the Watkins mob. Katie and Matthew in Soham. Judith Walford. In EastEnders name there. Warren Sherman and family. Hi, Warren. Uh, we've got Vic and Scott in Telford. Boinka Boinka. <laughs> what a great name. Jill Tolcher. Happy birthday to Lucy Bear. What great. Is that your real name? That's a brilliant name it is. Lucy Bear. Louisa Russell. Now, I'm going to impress you here. We've got a name here from Bulgaria. And because I'm, I'm fluent in the uh, in those Slavic sort of languages, that can be uh, translated to Georgi Zetchev. Hi, Georgi. 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 Hello, Mr. Zetchev. Welcome. We've got the Hampton Hill Yogis, Bendy Ben, Cat Cow, Carol Downward Dog, David, Frizzy, Fiona, and Teacher Tina. The yoga group there, you are all very welcome. We've got the Twits. Happy birthday to Jim and Nicola White from the rest of the Von Trapps. John Hayes in the Watsits. Jim Mudrak all the way from the USA. And Somashish Gosh. Welcome to all of you. If you would like a shout out next week, don't forget hello at quizzing.com. TV. That's the easiest way to get hold of us. Hello at quizzing.tv. Right, let's have round two, shall we? Again, it's 10 general knowledge questions. Best of luck. Now, at the start of this, I always put in a teaser on round two if you're new. Basically, uh, it's something for you to work out if you're just dashing the answers off and, and you've got a bit of time on your hands. Write this one down. If R equals one, Y equals two, and G equals three, how many does P equal? As, you, as is usual with these uh, riddles, uh, they're always easier than they look. But write it down, work on it during the round, and I'll give you the answer at the end of the round. There's no points available. If R equals 1, Y equals 2, and G equals 3, how many does P equal? Good luck. Here is uh, round two, question number one. If you wrote out all the numbers from 1 to 100, how many times does the number 3 appear? If you wrote out all the numbers from 1 to 100, how many times does the number 3 appear? Good luck. I've got some great news, by the way. There's a new uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger musical opening, and it's got music by the Beach Boys. It's called Conan the Bar 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 Barbarian. Should be good. Should be good. Look forward to that one. How many times does number three appear from one to a hundred if you wrote it down? You wrote down all the all the numbers. Question number two. Who was the first Beatle to have a solo number one hit single? Who was the first Beatle to have a solo number one hit single? When they're all broken up. Did you know for years I did backing vocals? Did you know that? The one you've probably heard me on is this vehicle is reversing. This vehicle is reversing. Just me then. Um, question three. Played by two teams of six players, dump and wipe are attacking techniques in which sport? Played by two teams of six players, dump and wipe are attacking techniques in which sport? In which sport do you dump and wipe? <laughs> dump and wipe. That's question three. Which sport? Question number four. A flamboyance is a collective noun for which colourful wading birds? A flamboyance is a collective noun 
for which colourful wading birds? I've been trying to put my lockdown time to good use. I started trying to do bird impressions, but I gave up. I wasn't very good. Couldn't give a hoot. Anyway. No. So number four, a flamboyant is a collective noun for which colourful wading birds? That's wonderful, you nature lovers. Question number five. The flag of Mozambique features images of a farming implement, a book, and what type of weapon? The flag of Mozambique features images of a farming implement, a book, and what type of weapon? <clears throat> Have a think about that one. We'll give you some time at the end to uh, go back over them. Question number six. Before it was replaced by the euro in 2002, what was the currency of Italy? Before it was replaced by the euro in 2002, what was the currency of Italy? Talking about Italy, I, I got a visit from the, uh, the plastic mafia the other night. They made me an offer I can't reuse. <laughs> Plastic Mafia, reuse, anyway, whatever. Before it was replaced by the Euro in 2002, what was the currency of Italy? Question seven. Macadamia nuts come from which country originally? Macadamia nuts come from which country? Question number eight. Which member of the British royal family was born a prince of both Greece and Denmark? Which member of the British royal family was born a prince of both Greece and Denmark? I hope your health's all good in this lockdown. I do worry about people because I know people have phobias and all sorts of things. I mean, I've got phobias, but. I just keep it to myself. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I've got a fear of heights, but you won't see me shouting it from the rooftops. Do you know what I mean? Number eight, which member of the British royal family was born a prince of both Greece and Denmark? Question number nine. Which literary character travelled to Lilliput and Brobdingnag, amongst other fictitious places? Which literary character travelled to Lilliput and Brobdingnag, amongst other fictitious places? places beautiful picture there might give you a clue might not and if you read the book or not which literary character traveled to lilliput and brobdingnag amongst other fictitious places talking of uh, literary characters did you see there was an article in the telegraph about dracula and vampires it didn't appear in the mirror or the sun Literary character travel to Lilliput and Brobdingnag. And question number 10, the final question of round two. Founded in Vancouver in 1971, which environmental organization's official goal is to ensure the ability of the earth to nurture life in all its diversity? I will say that again. Better, I hope. Founded in Vancouver in 1971, which environmental organization's official goal is to ensure the ability of the earth to nurture life in all its diversity. And that is the final question of round two. How are you doing? Here's a recap. In number one, if you wrote out the numbers from one to 100, how many times does the number three appear? Number two, the first Beatle to have a solo number one hit single. Number three, played by two teams of six players. Dump and wipe are attacking techniques Techniques in which sport? Number four, a flamboyance is a collective noun for which colourful wading birds? Number five, the flag of Mozambique features images of a farming implement, a book, 
and what type of weapon. Number six, before it was replaced by the euro in 2002, what was the currency of Italy? Number seven, macadamia nuts come from which country originally? You can obviously get them in lots of places now, but they originated in which country? Number eight, which member of the British royal family was born a prince of both Greece and Denmark? Number nine, which literary character travelled to Lilliput and Brobdingnag, amongst other fictitious places? And number 10, founded in Vancouver in 1971, which environmental organisation's official goal is to ensure the ability of the earth to nurture life and all its diversity? Good luck. Don't leave a blank. Put anything in. <clears throat> what are you thinking? Give us any feedback you've got about anything that happens tonight. To do with the quiz, I don't mean in the world. That would be uh, odd. Okay, here are the answers. Good luck. Number one, if you wrote out all the numbers from one to 100, how many times does the number three appear? It's 20. I hope you didn't miss out 33. The extra three on 33. That's what I mean. It's 20, though. Uh, the answer to number two, the first Beatle to have a solo uh, number one, I think this applied in the UK and the USA, George Harrison. With My Sweet Lord. Question number three, played by two teams of six players, dump and wipe are attacking techniques in volleyball. The answer to number four, a flamboyance is a collective noun for flamingos. Number five, the flag of Mozambique features a farming implement, a book, and <laughs> an AK-47 assault rifle. The old tourist, uh, the old tourist information board of Mozambique had that a lot of thought, didn't they? Welcome. I think it's something to do with their struggle for independence. That's what it's all about. We'll accept anything, rifle, gun. If you said that, we'll accept it because. Uh, to narrow it down to an AK-47 uh, takes some doing. So well done if you've got rifle, gun, you've got AK-47. I, uh, I'll take my hat off to you. I'll have to because you've got the gun pointing at me. Number six, before it was replaced by the euro, the currency of Italy was the Italian lira. Uh, I believe this, they still trade in Turkish lira. But the, the answer we wanted was the Italian uh, lira was the, the answer we wanted. Uh, Number seven, the answer was macadamia nuts originate in Australia. Question number eight, the answer, uh, which member of the British royal family was a prince of both Greece and Denmark? It's Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, just turned 99. 99. Got to stick a flake in him. <laughs> all, right, all right, it's a joke. I don't end up in the tower. Number nine, the literary character who travelled to Lilliput and Brobdingnag, another place, Lemuel Gulliver. Gulliver's all we want from Gulliver's Travels. Don't worry about his first name, though if you knew that, it's very impressive. And number 10, the final answer to round two, founded in Vancouver in 1971, the environmental organisation was Greenpeace. Well, well done uh, if you got 10 out of 10 there. Again, we've just thrown in a couple of tricky ones. And the Sean's teaser, again, th there's no uh, uh, point for this, just to keep your brains active. P equals 6. So the values of snooker balls are red equals 1, yellow 2, green 3, and P pink equals 6. Okay, but there's no points for that. You're still scoring yourself out of 10. And I hope you did very well. And that's round two. It's halfway, uh, half time. If you are new, we always toast the NHS. Bless them. There's still uh, plenty of people in hospital suffering. Uh, so they're keeping us safe as usual. Here's to them. And likewise to the uh, medical organisations in all of your countries and various places around the world. <clears throat> oh, can't beat drinking a quart of gin on a Friday night. Can you? Isn't it marvellous? OK, round number three is our picture round. So uh, because I, I do like singing, uh, um, as some of you may know, uh, what we've done, we've superimposed my face onto the lead singer of various bands. Now, they're very famous. We make them famous, obviously, because, as I say, the quiz goes out to Japan, Philippines, uh, Bulgaria, all over the place. So we have to make we have to make them very famous bands. Otherwise, um, 
people in those countries wouldn't know them, and that wouldn't be fair. So here we go. This is one to five. Good luck. There I am in the middle. They were in my peroxide years. Don't do it, kids. Look, it all falls out if you mess about too much. <clears throat> Number two was in my female years. That's still what I look like on a Saturday night, but we won't go there. Number three, the scarf years, I call them. What a top that. I've still got that tank top. Unbelievable. Number four, uh, yeah, look at that. There were the days. I had a six pack then. I've got a party seven now. It's a nightmare. Number five, the moody years, I call them. The moody years. I was surly, surly back in that time. Look at it. What do we think? They're all very famous bands, but obviously we've taken out, so we've taken out in most cases, most cases, the most famous member. Hopefully you'll still recognise them. Let's have a look at six to ten, and then we'll come back to those again in a minute. <clears throat> look at that, number six. Tell you some stories from the back then. Games we used to play in hotels. Won't go into that though. Number seven, man. Yeah. Number eight, when I had the old dreadlocks. Again, you can see what, what it does. So. Terrible, isn't it? Age. Number nine, this one I used to look after me teeth, that was. Cracking set of gnashes I had then. And number 10, the what you looking at years, they were. Okay, let's have another look at one to five. They're very famous bands. As I said, I've explained why. One to five, they get all your answers down. Okay, and six to ten again. Might struggle on a couple if you're in your, in your early 20s or late teens, but apart from that, we think they're very fair. So good luck. Don't leave a blank. Put an answer down now if you want to have a guess. And here are the answers to our picture round. Band number one, uh, there he is, there's Sting there. Bossing that looked better than I did, I will say. That's the police. Number two. Those funsters from Sweden, ABBA. Number three. That was the late, great Freddie Mercury, Queen. Number four. I was Gary Barlow there in Take That. Number five, Bono, Latin for good voice. In U2. Number six, The Spice Girls. Number seven, The Rolling Stones, Man. Number eight, Boy George in Culture Club. Number nine, The Dentist Dream. The Bee Gees, two of them sadly departed. There's old uh, Barry in the middle. Us Barrys have to stick together. And number 10, Oasis. Well, that's the end of the picture round. Hopefully that didn't give you too many problems. As I say, uh, if you're a <clears throat> teenager, you might have struggled on a couple. You just ask your mum or dad, really. They'd have known. I hope you like we got full marks with that one. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I've got a book coming out 1st of October. <laughs> in a shameless plug, ladies and gentlemen. It's called A Matter of Fact. So basically, I spent a year uh, in the world of quizzing, trying to become the best quizzer I could be. I set out to try and become the world champion. And um, there it is. Uh, that's the, uh, the uh, result of that year spent in the world of quizzing. It went quick, I can tell you. 
uh, and there it is, a matter of facts, one man's journey into the nation, nation's quiz obsession. That comes out on 1st of October, and that's available to pre-order on Amazon. Uh, so if you are a quiz fan, there's a lot of anecdotes in there as well about EastEnders and Ricky Gervais and all sorts of stuff, my time in the Navy, all sorts of nonsense in there. But um, I like to think it's an entertaining read, and uh, it's also a form of quiz book as well, really. So, uh, yeah, give it a go. Why not? Okay, well, let's do round number four then already. We're on to the final round. Go quick. We quick these lovely Friday nights, which we uh, really enjoy doing this. And we're going to keep going, uh, certainly until the bars and restaurants open, and then we'll, we'll, we'll play, it by, uh, play it by year. When you've got more leisure options, we'll see how it goes. Okay, the first question of round four. Which animals that are kept as pets can all be traced back to a single breeding pair in Syria in 1930, which animals that are kept as pets can all be traced back to a single breeding pair in Syria in 1930? Because also, while some forms of wildlife must be loving this, uh, you know, lack of uh, humans being around, a lot of things at zoos are in trouble, aquariums are in trouble. I mean, I've just adopted from my local aquarium a manatee. I called him Hugh. I'm just doing my bit for humanity, really. <laughs> Come on! Question number two. Selling for $90 million, the name of which U.S. city features in the name of the most expensive dot-com web domain ever sold? Selling for $90 million, the name of which U.S. city features in the name of the most expensive dot-com web domain ever sold? 90 million. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and copyright everything just for a laugh in like 1980. Copyright everything. It'd be worth billions, wouldn't you? Sell it on. So which US city? If you don't know, you can obviously have a clue. It's bound to be a famous one. Question number three. Which of these countries has the biggest population? Russia, Japan or Nigeria? Which of these countries has the biggest human population? Russia, Japan, or Nigeria? A lot of people in the world now. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? I saw an old film the other day about the Garden of Eden. Yeah. There was old Adam swaggering around like he's God's gift to women. <laughs> Unbelievable. So which country's got the biggest population? Russia, Japan, or Nigeria? At least you can have a guess if you don't know. Question four, a tock or a chef's hat, the official chef's hat, has 100 folds that are supposed to represent the 100 ways a chef knows how to cook what? A tock, the traditional chef's hat in the picture there, has 100 folds and they're supposed to represent the 100 ways a chef knows how to cook what? Which food stuff? That shut you up, haven't it? <laughs> Got to put a few tricky ones in. I'll have you all getting 40 again. Talking of food, I've started selling tomato ketchup online. I mean, it's just another source of income, you know, especially at this time, you know, you understand that. Question five. On which planet in our solar system will you find the tallest known mountain? In which, on which planet in our solar system will you find the tallest known mountain? <laughs> Number six, which high street chain is this represented? It's in internet slang, apparently. So if you're looking at internet slang, which high street chain is represented there? <clears throat> Excuse me. What do we think? Have a good look at that. Which internet, uh, in internet slang, which high street chain 
is represented by that symbol. Question number seven. The Grand Ole Opry is a weekly concert. Oh, I'll say that again, shall I? The Grand Ole Opry is a weekly country music concert held in which Tennessee city? The Grand Ole Opry is a weekly country music concert held in which Tennessee city? It's been going since the 30s, 20s, 30s. It's been going a long time. I think 100 years we've been going for. A lot of very famous country and western stars made their debut there. Well, on radio. The debut on radio on that. The Grand Ole Opry, a weekly country music concert held in which Tennessee city? Question number eight. The film Jurassic Park was incorrectly named. Most of the dinosaurs featured were from which other geologic period? The film Jurassic Park was incorrectly named. Most of the dinosaurs featured were from which other geologic period? There's a toughie for you. Talking of films, I just heard they're going to do a remake of Half a Sixpence. It's going to be in 3D. Hey, hey, ask your dad. Ask your dad. Which geologic period would most of those dinosaurs have featured in? Question number nine. Which island is home to the annual TT motorcycle race? Which island is home to the annual TT motorcycle race? Does attract riders from all over the world, so it's not just uh, an Anglo-centric question that riders from all over the world come to take part in that race. The TT motorcycle race. Which island is the home to that? And question number 10. Which actor plays Ted in the Bill and Ted film franchise? <clears throat> which actor plays Ted in the Bill and Ted film franchise? You might know the actors, but which one's which? OK, let's have a recap. Number one, which animals that are kept as pets can all be traced back to a single breeding pair in Syria in 1930? Number two, selling for 90 million dollars. The name of which U.S. city features in the name of the most expensive dot com web domain ever sold? Number three, which of these countries has the biggest population, Russia, Japan, or Nigeria? Number four, a tok or a chef's hat has 100 folds that represent the 100 ways a chef knows how to cook what, supposedly. Number five, on which planet in the solar system will you find the tallest known mountain in our solar system? Number six, which high street chain uh, was represented by that Internet slang logo. Number seven, the Grand Ole Opry is a weekly country music concert held in which Tennessee city? Number eight, the film Jurassic Park was incorrectly named. Most of the dinosaurs featured were from which other geologic period? Number nine, which island is home to the annual TT motorcycle race? Number 10, which actor plays Ted in the Bill and Ted film franchise? Good luck filling any blanks you've got. For here are the answers for round four. Number one, uh, we needed to know the names of those pets uh, that they were kept as pets that all could be traced unbelievably back to a single breeding pair in 1913 Syria, hamsters, officially Syrian or golden hamsters, but hamsters is, uh, is all we needed. Now, this one, selling for $90 million, the name of which US city is the most expensive Dot com. Las Vegas, I've got some info about that. Las Vegas.com, they've been paying for it in installments since 2005, and they're not expected to pay it off until 2040. Imagine what, one day someone just randomly copyrighted that for themselves, and they sold it on for $90 million. Number three, uh, which of these countries has the biggest population? Uh, unbelievably, it's Nigeria. Russia has 146 million. But don't forget, um, it became 15 countries back in the, in, in the late 80s. Japan, 126.5 million. And Nigeria, 206 million. All those figures give or take a few, but it's Nigeria. Number four, a tock on a chef's hat that has 100 folds 
Uh, it sh should denote the way a chef knows how to make eggs in 100 different ways. The answer is eggs we were looking for. I only know three. Scrambled board and fry, I suppose, is poached for. Uh, number five, which planet in the solar system will you find the tallest known mountain? It is Olympus Mons on Mars. It, unbelievably, it's a volcano 22 kilometers high. Olympus Mons. The answer to number six, which, which high street chain was, uh, did we see there in internet slang? It's Starbucks. We saw a star and two signs of dollars, also known as bucks, as we know. Uh, the answer to number seven, the Grand Ole Opry is held uh, in Nashville in Tennessee. Number eight, the film Jurassic Park, if it was uh, correctly named for the dinosaurs in it, would have been called Cretaceous Park. That's the uh, geologic period we were after. Cretaceous. Number nine, which island is home to the annual TT motor race? TT stands for Tourist Trophy, and it's the Isle of Man. Uh, the day the show was due to be broadcast was the 12th of June, but now uh, it's sadly, uh, sadly cancelled. Hopefully back on next year. And number 10, the actor who plays Ted, it was a choice of two. It was, of course, Keanu Reeves. That is the answer to question number 10. He played uh, Ted in Bill and Ted. How did you get on this week? I hope you did well. I hope you scored heavily on all the rounds. They're not too heavily. Uh, we know some boffins will get them all right, but we hope that you, uh, you managed to get quite a few right in each round. And that's it for another week. Uh, as Bill and Ted always said, be excellent to each other and party on, dude, because we'll be back same time, same place, Next week, Friday at 8 o'clock, my thanks as usual uh, to David Burton, the Gagmeister, uh, to our tech whiz, Jules Bowes, and I will now pass you back to the Queen of Quiz, Jane Allen. See you next week. Sean, thanks ever so much. Another brilliant quiz. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you uh, to Jules um, and to David for uh, the IT and the jokes um, all the way through. That was brilliant. Um, I will be on Facebook in a couple of minutes. Um, so do come and find me there. Uh, that's uh, look for Quizzing TV on Facebook. If you'd like a shout out, uh, please send that to hello at quizzing.tv. We love to hear from you and we'd be very happy to do shout outs for you. So please drop us a line there. Um, and I will also post some information about uh, Sean's uh, book as well. So uh, I'm sure that'll be a fantastic read. Um, do, do have a look at that. So uh, without further ado, I am going to head over to Facebook and leave you with instructions on how to put your scores into our leaderboard at Quest quizzing.com. So thank you very much for joining us and see you again next week. Bye bye.